Okay, so to understand O of n cubed, let's take a function into consideration. This cube function takes in an argument n, which is a number, and it's going to iterate through this for loop. And for every iteration of this for loop, it's going to iterate through the entirety of this for loop. And for every iteration of this for loop, we will need to iterate through the entirety of this for loop. And I'm going to have to apologize ahead of time for my disappointing drawing skills. But to illustrate this, I'm actually going to have to draw three-dimensional shapes, which is not something that I'm entirely good at. But anyways, for now, let's just ignore this image for now. Let's focus on this function. So for the top level for loop, we're going to be uh, iterating up until n. So if we pass the number four to our cube function, we'll end up here at this first for loop. And we're going to iterate starting from zero all the way up until n, which is four. So let's get started. So for our first iteration of this top level for loop, i is going to be zero. And I would just like to mention that if you're watching this video without having watched my video on O of n square, you're going to be pretty confused if you don't understand what, what a matrix is. So if you don't understand what a matrix is, please take the time to go watch my video on O of n square prior to watching this one. Anyways, in the video on O of n square, we discussed that we can imagine that this first for loop is representative of the columns of a two-dimensional square matrix, and this inner for loop is representative of the rows of a two-dimensional square matrix. So that would look something like this. So for each iteration, For each iteration of i, 0, 1, 2, 3, it would be representative of the columns. And for each one of these i's, we iterate through this nested for loop, which is representative of the rows. So for example, if we're on the 0th column, we're on i equals 0, we would have a row for every element of n. So this would also be 0, 1, 2, 3, which just means that i starts off as 0. So we start off at column 0. And then for column 0, we're going to iterate through the entirety of this nested for loop, which is j is 0, and that would be here. So i is 0, j is 0, and then that would be this cell here. And then i is still 0, but then j moves up to 1, so that would be here. I and j, and then j moves up to 2, and then j moves up to 3. And then once j is no longer less than n, in the case of a two-dimensional array, this for loop would then move up to 1. So we would move here, and then it would be 1 for i and 0 for j, and that would be here, and then we'd go down to 1 for j and 2 for j and 3 for j, and so on and so forth. Again, please go and watch my video on O of n square if this isn't clear to you. Now for O of n cubed, we're adding an additional nested for loop. So there's no longer just a row and a column. Now we have rows, columns, and we also have this third dimension here, which we'll just call height. So we have the columns that go in this direction, the rows that go in this direction, and the height that go in this direction. So at this point, we're working with a three-dimensional array. It's no longer a two-dimensional array. And it's the same concept. So it's not as difficult as it seems. We're going to draw it out now. So we would start with this initial for loop, and i is going to start off as zero, right? And we'll say that this initial for loop is representative of our columns. So we can actually go ahead and write these numbers out just so you guys can see. So we'll say that when i is 0, this column is 0. When i is 1, we're talking about this column. When i is 2, we're talking about this column. And when i is 3, we're talking about this column. And of course, once i becomes 4, we're no longer going to iterate through this for loop because i is then no longer less than n, which is 4. It will be equal to 4. And we can say the same thing for the rows. So we would say that row 0 would be here, row 1 would be here, row 2 would be here, and row 3 would be here. 
Now, I apologize if this is difficult for you to see. It's three-dimensional, so it's not really easy to draw this, but I hope that you guys can visualize what I'm trying to say. And then the same thing for the height. The height would be represented by this for loop here, so K. And that's actually, I'm sorry, I should, I should actually just name these by the letter that we're using in the actual function. So instead of calling this height, we'll call this K because it's representative, this, this for loop is, represent, is representing k here. So we'll just call this k as well. And instead of calling this columns, we'll call it i. And instead of calling this rows, we'll call it j. So for every iteration of this for loop, we're going to be moving up this k axis. So if we were to write in what the index is for k, it's going to kind of be hard to, to see right now, but it will be 0, 1, 2, and 3. So let's try to draw this out. So let's do this step by step for a little bit to get you guys understanding what's happening. So for this first iteration of this top level for loop, i is going to be equal to 0. So that means that i this line, we're going to be here at the zeroth index of i. And then for this nested for loop, j is also going to be equal to zero. So j is here, and we're going to be at zero here, so we're still going to be here. And for k as well, this for loop here, this axis here, we're also going to be at zero, which is here. So we're still going to be here. So instead of console logging these coordinates, We'll just draw a square for this coordinate. So this coordinate is 0, 0, and 0, and 0, 0, and 0. So we'll just draw a square here. And again, you're going to have to excuse my poor square drawing prowess. And since we continue with k until k is no longer less than n, we're going to continue to iterate through this for loop. So to help you guys out, I can just tell, I can just write i right now is equal to 0, j right now is equal to 0, and k, it was equal to 0, but we just drew the square for k at 0. So now k is going to iterate, it's going to increment 1, so k is now going to be equal to 1. So when k is at 1, and j is at 0, and i is at 0, so i, j, k is at 1, then we're going to go up another square. And this is going to be kind of hard to see because I'm literally trying to draw three-dimensional squares here and I'm just like terrible at drawing. I'll do my best. Give that one more go. Okay, so once we do that, k increments 1. So k is now 2. 2 is here. And then i and j are still 0. So we're still going to be at j, i here. So we're still going to be in this section. So we'll draw another two-dimensional square here. I mean two-dimensional cube. Excuse me if I call cube square. That's definitely not right. Cube. So there's another cube. And of course k is going to increment again. So then k is going to become 3. And then at 3 here we'll draw another square. I mean cube. Sorry. And at this point, k is going to increment, and then it's going to be equal to 4. And once k is equal to 4, k is no longer less than n, because n is also 4. So now k is equal to n. So this for loop is done. And now we move up to this for loop. And this for loop will increment 1, and j will then be equal to 1. Because for each iteration of this for loop, we go through the entirety of this for loop. So we've gone through the entirety of this for loop. So now we can move up one iteration in this for loop. And we can't move back up to this for loop until we iterate through everything within this for loop. So we're still on, so we're only incrementing the row. And then we're going back into iterating k. So now that j is equal to 1, i is still 0. So we're still here. We're still here because this is the column. And then i is still 0. This is i, and i is still at 0. And we're still here, but j went from 0 to 1. So now we're here. So we're back into k, and k is going to start off as 0 again. So at i being 0, 
j being 1 and k being 0 because 0, k. This is k and this is 0 and we're here. We'll draw a square. Sorry, once again I said square, but yeah, we'll draw a cube. Then k increments and we'll draw another cube. And then k increments, and we draw another cube. And then k increments, and we draw one more cube because once k reaches 4, so yeah, k, k will increment one more time, and it'll reach 4, and now k is uh, no longer less than n. So we go back up to our j for loop, and that will increment 1. So this one will now become 2. And it's pretty much the same thing throughout the entire throughout the entire function. And it's getting hard to see the cubes that I'm drawing here, but eventually we'll get to a point where the entire cube is filled in, which will look something like this. So we'll get to a point where the entirety of this cube will be filled with these miniature cubes, which are just the iterations of these for loops. Hey, just one quick interruption. If you are finding this video helpful or it's bringing you to some type of understanding, please take the time to like and subscribe. So once we get to that point and the cube is completely filled in, At that point, that means that we have iterated through the entirety of this top level for loop. And feel free to take the time to try and draw this out on your own, but I basically went through as much as I could with the time that I have in this video, but it's pretty much the same thing until the entirety of the cube is filled. So once all these for loops have completed, you'll be left with the cube that looks like this. And since this is a cube, that means that its height and its length and its width are all going to be of the same length. And that is to say that they're all going to be in. Because if you look here, we went through in iterations of j. We went through in iterations of i. And we went through in iterations of k. And again, I'm sorry for my poor drawing. I hope that you get the idea. So if n is 4, this is going to be 4, this is going to be 4, and this is going to be 4. And to get the volume of this cube, to get the volume, the space within this cube, since we know that all of these are going to be the same, we only need to know one of them. And one of them to get the volume, we just do, for this case, 4 cubed. And 4 cubed is 64, and that will be the volume of this cube, which just means that there are 64 of those, of these miniature cubes within this larger cube. And that's the volume. So O of N cubed, our N is 4, so O of 4 cubed which equals 64, which is the volume of this cube, which also happens to be the number of times we would perform this function, console log the coordinates, but in our case, we just drew the squares. And that is why this function is O of n cubed.